overcame. Hallelujah. How many overcomers do we have online this evening? Hallelujah. If you know that you have overcome something during the course of today, just shout a hallelujah. Just type a hallelujah. Because, you know, we've been through today and or the week that gone and the week that we are in now and so many things that would have happened. But we know that we overcame. We overcome certain things because of the goodness of God. We overcome because he is our strength hallelujah he is our high tower he is our shield and buckler we overcame hallelujah hallelujah somebody need to just give god some praise right now wherever you are wherever you are viewing from it doesn't matter which part in your house in your office wherever you are just take two seconds and just say god i thank you i thank you for allowing me to overcome this situation and even if you ain't See the situation changing. Just still praise him because you know that by the time tomorrow reach, you can re re rejoice and you can shout on top of the mountain top that you overcame, that you are an overcomer because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God that I overcome uh, the situation in my life. I thank God that you would have brought me out uh, of so many things uh, throughout uh, my previous, my, my past. Uh, I overcame them uh, and now I am coming into new things. Hallelujah. I'm coming into new realms. I'm coming into to new boarding. Hallelujah. So I am grateful uh, that I have a God that allows me to overcome obstacles and adversaries and battles, my God. Uh, so I overcame, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God for all the overcomers, hallelujah, this evening, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings, 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 blessings to each and every one who are viewing. Let, let me know quickly where you are viewing from so I'll be able to greet you. Hallelujah. And thank you for going ahead and sharing the link. Hallelujah. We are in the last a day of the, the last Wednesday, sorry, of the month of September. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to be alive on this uh, 29th day, the last Wednesday in the month of September. Oh, hallelujah. We overcome, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We overcome the things that September brought. Ah, uh, oh, the negative things that September would have brought our way. We overcame them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you're gonna thank God uh, for the first until the 29th of September and thank him for the 30th, hallelujah. Thank him for the days that gone by uh, that you would have overcome, hallelujah. You would have gotten victory uh, in Christ Jesus in this month. You got a, a testimony, hallelujah, hallelujah. You would have received uh, uh, even what you didn't even ask for. For the fact that uh, we are alive, it means that we would have received even more, oh hallelujah, from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, hallelujah. Very quickly, uh, let me let me just greet some people before we start. Hallelujah. I want to greet. Uh, I saw my brother Ben from Vancouver, Canada is in the house. Hallelujah. Blessings to you. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Hallelujah. God bless you, Nisha. Hallelujah from St. Vincent. God bless you, Sister Morgan from Antigua. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, Apostle Deborah Samuel from Canada. Hallelujah. That's my spiritual mother right there. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in and being online with us this evening. Hallelujah. Blessings to each and every one. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. 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 This evening. 
I bring greetings from uh, our leaders at Rear Boat Ministries, Apostle Andrew John and Pastor Cassandra John, hallelujah. I bring greetings on their behalf and all the other leaders, hallelujah. Uh, Mother Jack, God bless you, hallelujah. Rosanna from Guyana, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in, hallelujah. So I greet each and every one of you, and it is indeed a joy and a privilege that I could come uh, once again to uh, 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 share with you. Hallelujah. God has been so good. He has given me the grace to continue Wednesday after Wednesday. And I thank God for all the persons that share, all the persons that pray, all the persons that give me words of encouragement. Because as ministers of the gospel, we do need encouragement. Hallelujah. We need the encouragement. We need the prayers. Hallelujah. So I just want to thank God that if it wasn't for him, uh, I don't know how I would have make it. If it wasn't for him, his grace and his mercies that have been renewed every single day over our lives, I don't know how I would have make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God would have given, the Holy Spirit would have given me a team for the month of September because he is mindful of the persons who are pregnant or with dreams and visions and ideas and the promise hallelujah the purpose he, he is he is mindful of all of us and when he started to speak to me with regards to this team and the team for those who are joining for the first time a team is help i'm about to give birth and I, I i greet all the first time viewers this evening if you are viewing for the first time just shout a amen or a hallelujah so that i will be able to to um greet you hallelujah blessings to minister samantha diamond hallelujah god bless you prophetess cassia from diana god bless you hallelujah thanks for coming in hallelujah so the the, the team that the holy spirit drop into my heart is it, a team that will be able to dissect and help persons that are going through uh, some level of labor pain and they're not sure what is happening. Some persons are going through it, know that they're going through it, but just cannot take it. They just don't want it. Some persons are not aware that it is labor pain that they are feeling. Hallelujah. And previous Wednesdays, we would have listened to uh, Minister Samantha to diamond we will listen to apostle deborah out of canada and we would have listened to apostle christine martin hallelujah and tonight we are about to listen to another powerful woman of god but before she come on before i tell you who she is hallelujah i want us to go into a time of prayer it is good when you could just you know, bring the presence of God wherever you are, because in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm a woman of prayer. I, I like to, to, to spend time in prayer with me and my God, because I know when I go before him in prayer, in worship, I know things happen. Mountain moves. It might not move immediately or in the same timing, my timing, but it does move. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we worship you this evening. We bow our hearts before you, mighty God, and we give you praise. We thank you for another day, Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, oh God, that you are our provider, mighty God. We thank you, oh God, that you would have sustained us uh, throughout this day and the days are gone and the days to come. Uh, because we know that you are the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. And we worship you this day almighty God because so many things could have gone wrong so many things could have happened but you send your angels to stand guard over us my God almighty father so we worship you this evening and we thank you oh God that you have called us yours almighty father that we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people oh hallelujah to the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. We thank you this evening, God, that you are with us. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit, wherever we are viewing from. We welcome
welcome you to be in our midst. Uh, so even as the word comes forth, uh, mighty God of lives will be changed. Uh, minds will be transformed and renewed. Uh, oh God, sickness will be healed. Uh, oh mighty Father, deliverance will come uh, to the house that are viewing mighty God. Uh, Lord God, answers will come. Uh, oh God, for persons who are seeking answers because of what they are going through, uh, we decree and we declare by your mighty power this evening, God, uh, that answers will come to your people, God, uh, that Lord God, the ones who are in a backslidden state, almighty God, uh, that they will come away from that state and they will come into you because you alone uh, are worthy and worthy to be praised. Uh, man will fail us, God, but you never fail. Uh, you are a faithful God. Uh, you are the God that stick it closer than a brother. Even when our mothers and our fathers forsake us, God, uh, you never leave us, uh, nor would you forsake us. So this evening, we worship you for what you are about to do, God. Uh, we open our hearts to receive. Uh, mighty God, may this airways, oh mighty God, be a channel, oh God, uh, that will receive from you this evening, mighty God. Uh, Lord God, let anything that wants to block or hinder your people from hearing clearly. Uh, may it be removed even now in the name that is above all name. Uh, Almighty Father, we thank you, God. Unctionize your minister for this evening, God. Uh, Lord God, touch her tongue. Uh, touch her lips, oh God, with coals of fire. That as she brings forth your word, God, it will be, it will come forth with fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord God, and your word will come forth sharper than any two-edged sword, mighty Father. So this evening, we thank you for what you are about to do, and we worship you, almighty God, for who you are in no other name, but in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And without any further, further hesitation, this is a young lady that I, I knew quite some time. And I, I saw her in ministry. We did ministry in, in, together in Trinidad as well. And I am so grateful that she take the opportunity, she make herself available to do the work of God. She has a passion for the things of God. She has a passion for young people. Hallelujah. And as she come forth tonight, I want to introduce you to Minister Jetora Bailey from the church that cannot be hidden under the leadership of Prophet Bailey and First Lady Bailey, hallelujah. I bless God for them for allowing and releasing her to come on this platform for the first time on Prophetic Wednesday to share based on this theme what the Lord will have downloaded in her spirit to tell, to tell the people, to tell us what God is saying to her based on this theme. She's also a student of the University of the West Indies. And I bless God that she will. She will, she will come out in all level of excellence as she give birth to her, 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 her um, degree that she is studying right now. So without any further ado, please, viewers, help me welcome Minister Jatora Bailey. Minister Bailey. Good night, good night to everyone. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord, our King, our everything, our friend. Listen, he is everything to us. I really want to thank the leadership of Rehoboth Ministry, Apostle Andrew and Pastor Cassandra John for this great opportunity. I'm honored, I am privileged. It is as though it's like my second home because we are so close, you know, so I greet the members, the leadership of Rehoboth Ministry. I also greet Prophetess Amanda Book, who is like my second mother, you know? So I greet you. Thank you for this great opportunity. And I know that God has a word for his people tonight. I am mm -hmm. just a vessel, just the messenger, 
but it's the Holy Ghost that would speak to your hearts, to your souls, and to your spirits. So I just say, Lord, have your way tonight. Don't entertain us and make us feel good, but Lord God, cause a change in our hearts. Let mm. something in our spirit leap. Let there be a transformation that we will go from glory to glory to glory. Lord, your word says that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do. So, oh God, even now, let your word go through the screens to every heart, to every home. And Lord God, let your power flow in everyone's life. I pray even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. If you believe it, type in the chat, I believe it, and I receive it. Hallelujah. Watch a team for this month. Indeed, this team is a rhema. It's a word for the no. Help, help me, please. I'm about to give birth. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but I know that I'm about to give birth, and I need help. I need an extra push i need some guidance and as i was preparing and i really want to honor those women of god that god used so mightily in the earlier parts of this month um apostle deborah we have um apostle christine martin um minister samantha diamond these women really set a platform and for us that have been on every week, we really need to go back and digest and reevaluate. They have touched a lot of parts of the labor and the boating and locating destiny helpers and all these different things. But I feel that the Lord wants to shift me in a different direction tonight. And what I'm sensing is that we need to talk about the place of boating. We have learned about the transition, the labor, all of that stuff. And I will touch a little bit on it again, but it's important for us to realize that the location of our button does not determine what kind of button we're going to have. Where God has located us to give birth to does not determine the level or the magnitude at which the button will come. I will get into that. I just want you, if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to turn to Luke 2, and we're going to be reading from verse 7, and then we're going around to verse 16, right? So Luke chapter 2, verse 7, and then we're going to read verse 16. So Luke 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And verse 16 says, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And this is our key scripture verses for this evening. So firstly, listen, I am pregnant. Amanda, I know what the Lord has told me. I know I have a call on my life. I know I have a grace on my life. I know what the Lord has called me to do in this season. Listen to me, I am pregnant. Just like Mary's encounter, the angel of the Lord came to her and said, listen to me, you're going to bring forth a child. And she said to the angel, what are you talking about? That's impossible. I have never been with a man. I don't have the qualification. I have not done what it takes to be pregnant. But God is saying, irregardless of if you feel that you are equipped, if you feel that you are capable, he is saying to us, listen to me, I know what I have placed inside of you for you to give birth to in this season and in this time. So the first thing I want to establish is that that which is in us is a holy thing. It is a Amen. precious thing. It's not something to be taken for granted. It's not something to be taken lightly. For God to 
place his divine nature, his precious gift, his precious book, his precious vision, his precious ministry, the degrees, uh, whatever he has called you to vote in this season, it is something that is precious. It is something that is supernatural. It is beyond the natural ability. You see, Mary knew it had nothing to do with her. It had nothing to do with Joseph, who she was in spouse with, but it was all God's. And the word of God says that he that began a good work in you, he's the one that will complete it. And he is faithful Amen. to complete it. And my second point is that which is birthed in you, it is God that will complete it. It is he that will bring it to full term. Not Come if on. you eat a proper diet, not if you do what you're supposed to do. If we talk about physically obeying the doctors, going for your prenatal checkup, although those things are important, but when God has initiated a gift, a vision, a calling, it is he, he is the one that sees, monitors, and ensures that it comes to pass. He becomes our physician. He becomes our doctor. He becomes our OBGYN. He's the one that monitors the burden within you. And we know as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. And you know in burden, and it's so coincidental that this is my field. This is what I want to do in the future. So Prophet is I'm not going to bring both the spiritual and the physical to us. A pregnancy right. goes through trimesters. So we have three trimesters and these span of the months in which a baby would develop. And if you ask a medical person, the first trimester is usually the most important trimester. This is where all the organs in the baby's body is being developed. It's being cultivated. It is a critical season. I want you to type that in the chat. It is a critical season. When God has given you something to birth, be very careful who you expose to Jesus. this person. Be very careful who you announce your pregnancy My to. God. There are certain persons that are only supposed to see the evidence of your pregnancy. You're not supposed to tell them because there are some persons that the enemy has designed to snatch that which God has planted in you and uproot it before its season. The Jesus. season where your pregnancy is being developed and being nurtured, you're being at the feet of Jesus as Mary was. You're gleaning from the spirit. You're getting wisdom and understanding. You are gleaning from the presence. You are learning the ways of the spirit. You are learning how to write the book. You are learning how to be the wife. You're learning how to be the husband. You're learning how to birth that destiny. You are learning. You're looking up about degree programs. You're looking up about school. You're learning how to be a good father, a good mother. In that season of birthing, it's not a season to talk 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 that i'm on, come reminded on. now of when the children of israel was going around the jericho wall and they were bought in jericho and they were not even aware there was a time for them to shout and scream and make noise but there was a time before that in which they really? had to be quiet you see in the early trimester of your pregnancy not everyone will know that you are pregnant not everyone will have eyes to see in the spirit to recognize the gifting upon your life. And sometimes I've been there when you know that God has called you to something and you wish that somebody around you would notice, would recognize that, hello, I am with child. Although you can't see it, there's something in me that is brought in. I can feel it. I can sense it. I know God has called me to be a worship minister. I know he has called me to write song. I know he has come into the area of prophecy, of apostle, of prophet, of evangelist. You know there is a calling on your life, but nobody can see it. It is the season of the developing of your 
pregnancy. It is the season to latch on to the unbiblical card of the presence of God. It is the season where not man's opinion will nourish the seed within you, but the one that placed the seed in you is the one that will supply and nourish the seed. In this time, the baby will latch on to the nutrients that the mother would be taking in. My question to you is in your trimester one, what are you feeding on? What are you allowing your spirit to feed on? What are you allowing into your spare? What are you allowing into your mind? What are you listening to? What are you talking about? What conversations are you having? It is a critical time. Type in the chat, I must give birth. I must give birth. It's not an option. It is a critical season. And as that trimester one comes along, what is happening is that the baby begins to grow in length. The size of the baby begins to grow. The small vision that you started with, with just teaching some children, on afternoons, you're having a bigger vision of a school. Just uh, normal letters, uh, writings that you will journal in your book. The vision is getting bigger where God is saying, no, I'm calling you to write a book. Um, where you're saying, okay, God, I just want to do some extra subjects. God is saying, no, I am positioning you to start university or whatever the vision is. There's a point in time as the trimester goes along, your baby begins to grow. As if you're nourished in the presence, as you glean from the spirit of God, your baby begins to grow. In this growing process is where you become uncomfortable. I wish I had a better word for you tonight, but you are about to feel uncomfortable. The baby begins to push on your organ. The baby squashes everything. And now what is growing inside of you takes priority. The word of God says to deny yourself, take up the cross and you follow Christ. The word of God also says, if you would lose your life, you will find it. But if you find your life, you will lose it, which means as we are growing into pregnancy, the Lord is saying that things that mattered before are took preeminence or took priority they would no longer matter because that which is bought in, in you will cause you to change your perspective there are things that you have to do in preparation to nurture this child there are things that you will have to do. There are things that you will have to put away. There are things that, that you will have to sacrifice. There are things you will have to go into prayer and fasting about. There are some friends that you will no longer be able to have as friends. There are some conversations that you will no longer be able to be able to have because it is going to stifle your baby. It is going to compete against that which God wants to develop and grow within you. You have to come to the point that you say, God, like Mary say, not my will, but your will be done. We have to get to a point that we say, God, I am not going to just live a Christian life ordinary, but I'm going to accomplish that which you have said of me, the prophetic words that are over my life, they will not just fall to the ground and not manifest, but in this lifetime, they must manifest. I am willing to pay the price for my burden. Are you willing to nourish your baby? Are you willing to be uncomfortable? My God, are you willing to travail in the 
spirit, when others might be sleeping, when others might be going out and enjoying their self, are you willing to turn down your plate when really and truly you would love to eat, but because of what is brought in in your spirit, you need to push, you need to cause it to grow and nourish because what is brought in in you is bigger than you. We have to prepare ourselves for the place of voting. The preparation is always difficult. Your flesh will be challenged. Your flesh will have to die. Listen, your flesh will have no place. It has to go. The spirit and the flesh cannot dwell together. One has to be dominant over the other. And in this place of preparing to go to the boating room. In the natural, the woman will have her boating bag or her hospital bag, and she will put everything that she thinks she needs in this season. What do you need for you to accomplish that book? What do you need to do in this season? I know we love to, it's important to pray. It's important to fast. It's important to spend time in the presence of the Lord. But there are other things that the Lord will require of you. Prophetess Amanda had to do courses. She did things. You, you have to be aligned in places. God will call you to sit and glean from somebody in a church. Somebody, God might say, go and serve your first lady. God might say, go and read this book. God might say, go and apply for this job. God might say, you know, mentor these young women. Do what he has called you to do. We have to pray. We have to travail. But many times as believers, it stays in our prayer room and nothing happens on the outside. There is no work put in. We have have the faith but the bible says faith without works is dead so we have to put in that which she has called us to do in my case i know that i am bought in a degree i have to go to school i have to be diligent i have to study even when i really don't want to i have to do the assignments i have to do the work because that is what is required of me i am preparing to burn that which is in me because your preparation will determine how well you're able to push in that boating room in that boating place before we get to the boating room we need to ensure that our environment in the boating room is sanitized we must go through the process of consecration we must go through the process where god tries our heart. He tries our motives, my God. He tries the hidden things that no man sees, the things that are not apparent to the eyes of men. He tries that. He determines how well have we learned of what he has been teaching us. Sometimes we are going through a dry season. Sometimes it seems as if attacks are coming from left, right, and center, and you're wondering, why is this happening? What is happening? I don't understand. But God is saying that I am testing your heart. Some of us, there are, there are places of unforgiveness that we have to go to. There are places of pride that we have to go to. It is necessary if the mother's heart stops beating, the baby automatically will die. We might overlook certain things, character flaws, things that God is trying to develop in us. I remember in a season of my life, I was very prideful. You couldn't tell me anything. I was it, okay? You couldn't tell me anything different. I thought that I have arrived. I was spiritual, okay? I know how to speak in the Holy Ghost. I know how to act in church. I know how to behave, but my heart was so far from God and I could not go to the Burton room until I went through that process where God had to break my spirit and break my pride and break my intellectual ability where I felt I didn't need him as I should. There is a place that God has to
to strip away the flesh because it's not in your ability you'll be able to vote, but it's by the spirit that you are able to vote. It's not because you could sing well, not because you could write well, not because you look good that you will attract the husband that God has wanted for you to attract, not because you went to Bible school means that you are equipped to lead the people that God has seen. If we don't deal with our character flaws, we will make the gospel and the kingdom look bad. We need to deal with our hearts. We need to be separated. We need to be consecrated. Our appetite for the flesh needs to die. Some of us, God is calling us to pray and fasting. Some of us, God is calling us to disconnect from, from friends. Some of us, God is calling us to deal with our childhood trauma, our childhood hurt. Some of us, we are being led by our emotions. We cannot even hear the voice of the spirit. The Lord is saying, come and sit at my feet. I want to do so on your heart is it painful yes are you going to be vulnerable yes is it going to change overnight no but the God that I know the God that I serve the God that I've experienced he's so patient with us he's so loving with us I know there are times when oh my God physically I say God I don't know when I will get this thing right when will I get it right when will I start to do better but his grace Grace was sufficient for me, my God. I feel that for somebody, his grace is sufficient for you. He's the mender of the broken, the hurt you might feel. I've been broken, I've been damaged too much. How can God use such a damaged thing? But God loves the broken because he's the mender of the broken. He is the potter, as Jeremiah explained. Experience, the one that knows how to mend and to bend and to reform and revive. My God, even when people said that I would not come out anything, that I would have a child before I got married, that I would do that, that was not the verdict of my father because he said, if Jethro would only come and allow me to mend her heart, allow me to consecrate her, my God, he washed me with his blood. He washed me with his supper. He washed me with his power. He washed me with his grace that I don't even recognize who I am anymore, but I could only lift up my eyes and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my where would I be? Who would I have been? I, I didn't have any repetition. It didn't matter what family I belonged to. I was messed up in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit. I've been through rough relationships. People have abused me and used me, but God says, I am consecrating you. I am separating you for this time and this season. And I had to be separated. I had to be purified. If we are not purified, if we are not separated, we would contaminate that which God wants to birth in us. If we're not being purified, when we give birth, we will contaminate that child, that, that destiny, that book, our character would not have been fixed. Our character would not have been dealt with in the season of consecration. And God wants us not to contaminate, but to nurture that which he has brought it in us. So we have to go through that process of consecration and being separated. The word of God says that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So we now have to learn the ways of the kingdom. We have to be learn the fruits of the spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us and to guide us. Don't be naive. Don't pretend with God. Tell him, Holy Spirit, I'm dealing with I am not patient enough. I need to learn long suffering. God, I have a quick temper. I get angry quickly. Lord, if you don't bridle my tongue, I will not speak as you want me to speak. We have to be honest with God and be in that place of consecration and separation. The Bible says that 
Jesus grew in stature and wisdom and favor with men. There is a process of us growing and developing in our character, in our motives, because when we are bought in, it's not about us, but it's for God to get the glory, for him to receive the glory, for him to receive the honor, for him to receive the praise. We have to be separated and consecrated and purified before we get into our place of burden. When we get into the place of burden, we now have to realize, who am I carrying into the place of burden? Who is going to go into my birthing room with me this is a critical part this is very important because our association the persons that go into this boating room with us would determine how well we will push when that time of traveling will come who are your destiny helpers who are the persons that god has set and equipped for you to go into this boating room with. Jesus had his tree in a circle. There were other disciples, but he had the three persons that he would carry with him when he had to boat a assignment. Elijah had Elisha. We have Naomi and Ruth. Ruth needed guidance. She needed instructions. She needed somebody that would teach her how to be positioned at Boaz's feet for that which God had called her to. Who are you listening to? Who are you getting wisdom from? The word of God says in Psalms 1, that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. We cannot carry ungodly people into the boating room because they do not understand the things of the spirit. There are men and women of God that God will bring into your life that will teach you the ways of the spirit. Men and women of God that will teach you how to travail. Men and women of God that will teach you that when there is pressure that means that, that your breakthrough is at the end not men and women that will say you can't do this you can't push this you can't write this book this is not in your ability to do this is are you sure this is what god is telling you to do we don't want those kind of persons to enter into the boating room with us and i want to say that sometimes there are persons that come along our pregnancy they might be present in trimester one they might be present in trimester two they might be present in trimester three but still god has not designed for them to go into the boating room with you there are times that we have to go to the lord and ask him what is your will or your intention or the purpose in which you have brought this individual into my life? Do you want them to go into the boating room with me? We need a spiritual midwives to help us push in the place of labor. Spiritual midwives that have been trained by the spirit. I have encountered time and time again seasons where I was tired. I was like, God, this seems too far-fetched. This seems, I know what you're saying. I know the prophetic words, but it seems as if I can't do this. Maybe it's not my season. Maybe I heard wrong from you. And there are people that God would allow to call me, to message me in that same time that I'm thinking this or feeling this way and they would say you know Jethro you were just in my spirit and I was sensing this for you or a word of encouragement we need persons that will help us to push persons that will say keep going persons that will say 
that the Lord is with you. Persons that will say you will write that book. Persons that would say that child of yours would return back to God. Persons that would say don't give up praying. Don't give up fasting. Don't give up reading. Don't give up giving. Persons that would say even when you're disappointed, they will say don't worry. God is with you. He will see you through. He will guide you. He will motivate you. We need persons that will help us to push in this area and then we get into labor the pressure the pains that occur in the bottom room the bottom room is not a room that is quiet we are no longer quiet anymore but there is pains there is travailing in the spirit my god there is crying on your knees some of us there are tears there are no more words that we could really say we could only cry sometimes you groan there are songs that come from your spirit that only god understands that only the holy spirit would understand and you push and what is amazing as the baby is coming down and you're experiencing the dilation the baby is coming down and you are being stretched the pressure that you are feeling now as you go through your labor as you go through your processing as you go through your traveling the pressure is not to kill you saints of god the pressure is not to destroy you but the pressure or the labor pains is to stretch your capacity my god for what god is about to burn through you it's causing you to increase your capacity it's causing your spiritual senses to be sensitized it's causing your spiritual hunger to increase it's causing your faith to be increased it's causing your desire for the things of the spirit to increase in the in the pressure in the travailing in the labor room god is stretching you because until you expand you will not be able to push and bought that which god has called you to boat and even sometimes we are feeling the pressure and the enemy will send persons to whisper discouragement in our ears and whisper things and cause us to question and cause us to doubt if God has really called us to this season and to this time. But I silence every voice of every enemy i silence tonight every voice of the accuser of the brethren but we will only hear the voice of the spirit as we continue to boat as we continue to travail as we continue to stretch and our capacity is being increased god is saying that i am there with you the bible says that even if we make our bed in hell he is there with us the pain the travail the the attacks the it seems as if as you try to go forward it's like you're taking seven steps backward for our men and our women that are in the season of boating listen to me as you are being stretched continue to be rooted in the presence as you are being stretched continue to declare the words of god Habakkuk says to write the vision down and make it plain and when you will see it you will run and in when you're being stretched is the time God is saying run with my word run with the gifting persevere continue to push it's not all the time that you will feel like it that you will feel like being disciplined that you will feel like doing what God has called you to do that you will feel like being submissive to your pastors that you will feel like writing the chapter that you will feel like doing that degree that you will feel like to learn Mom, of him yeah. but in that time is when you have to push be on your feeling the word of god says that the just live by faith 
We don't live by what we feel. If you ask prophetess Amanda, there are times that she doesn't feel like to travail. But in those times, the Lord comes with his supernatural strength and enables us to do it. Remember, we said from the beginning, it is not us that will do it, but he's the one that will brought it through us. So in the times when the pressure, there's a song that says, if it had not been for the shaking, I oh, would not Jesus. have been ready for the making. If it had not been for the pressing, if it had not been for the beating, we have to realize there is purpose in the pressure. There is purpose in the pain. As you are being stretched, my God, and your abilities are being strengthened. Your spiritual eyes are being sensitized, being open to the voice of the spirit. You are now able to pick up the antennas. You're able to pick up quickly the devices of the enemy. But if it had not been for the stretching, you would not have been positioned in the right place. My God, if it wasn't for certain situations, I would not have known what God has placed on the inside of me. You see, sometimes uh, without the labor pain, the woman will never know that it's time to give birth. I am here to tell you that if you're feeling labor pain, it's just an indication that your time for giving birth has come. It is not a deterrent. It is not cause you to give up and to sit down. You know, sometimes in our Christian walk, we want it to be so easy. Prophetess Amanda, we think that we should just cock up our foot and relax. But if we look at the life of Jesus, the things that he had to endure, the things that he had to go through, the spitting, the beating, the torture, the Bible says that he was beaten to unrecognizable. If you knew Jesus before he was crucified, if you saw him after he was crucified, you would wonder who is this person? They broke him. They spat upon him. They set all manner of evil against him. But he said, not my will, my corobo shah, but your will be done. Even though he was in the valley of decision where he was sweating blood, where he saw, he was like, God, can this cup pass on me? Some of us, we're in the valley. We are in labor and we're saying, God, can this be easier? Can't it be less stressful? Why it has to be this way? But if we would take the mother as Jesus and say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Not what is comfortable for me, but I will give birth even in the pain. Even if I'm traveling, some of us, we have been praying for years. We have been waiting for years, but God is saying that the boating is right there. He's saying, listen to me, you are in the boating place. You're in the place of boating. My God, your labor pain is an indication that your baby is coming out, that which is boating is coming out. Some of you, you're looking at the finances. My God, you're looking at how many doors were shut. And I'm going back to what we read in the beginning. You see, Mary and Joseph, they had their boating plan. They said, listen, we're going to go to an inn. We're going to have this baby and we're going to do this thing. Many of us, we think that we know where we should be boating our babies. Many of us, some doors have been closed in our face. You thought you would have got the promotion. You thought you would have already left St. Vincent and got a great opportunity overseas. And it feels as if the end door has been shut in your face and you are wondering, where am I going to birth this child? Where am I getting the money? Where am I getting the resources? God, I know you're saying to do this. I know you're saying to start this school, but I have no teachers. I don't know what to do. It seems like I'm alone in the water, but God is saying, I have a birth in place for you. It might not be where you thought you're going to be voting, 
but I have a place designed for you to birth. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that I know the plans that I have towards you, said the Lord. Plans that will prosper you to give you a hope and a future and a great expected end. The word of God says that God's ways are higher than our ways. You see, most of us want to give birth in this luxurious in we want to be comfortable we want to cock up our foot we want to sit down and you know relax and stuff like that but god wants you to be boated in some place that are unorthodox place that are not usual place that are irregular the bible says they said what good can come out of nazareth what what good can come out of that place but our savior our king came out of that place what good could come out of saint vincent what good could come out of bottom tongue what good could come out of this poor family what good could come out of this person but i'm here to tell you that god has designed a boating place for you that when you are boated in that place uh, pastors will not believe uh, that you have even boated in a place you might be saying nobody in saint vincent has ever done this nobody in canada has ever done this it doesn't matter if anybody has done it before god has designed that place for you to boat, so let the inn close its doors. Let the inn close its doors. Let the inn say, we have no room for you. Some of you, you have gone to places and you thought that you will have a room there, but God is saying, that's not where I have destiny in you to birth my god some pastors you might say god i'm getting older in age that gift or that vision that you gave me when i was younger the time for that has passed he's saying no the boating place is prepared for you to push and to birth that thing in that place is not where you want to be boated but in the place and the time in which god has designed for you to boat i know for me the time i would say lord call me to ministry you know after i finished school call me to ministry after i got married and get a little you know a little child or a little daughter or a little son you know, prophetess Amanda and Jesus was like, no, Jeshura, that's that's not your boat in place. That's that's what you desire. But I'm going to call you to do it in the midst of all that is happening. Somebody might be saying, my God, starting a business in the midst of a pandemic where the economy seems as if it's going down. No, that's your place of boating. God has designed that place of boating for you. And it's so amazing that our Lord and Savior he was born in a manger. He was born where the animals was. That There was nothing clean about it. There was nothing luxurious about it. I, prophetess a man, I could imagine the smell. I could imagine the songs of the goat and the sheep and the cow and all these other different animals. There was no nice music playing, no worship, no sinash, no nothing like that. But it was amazing that he was boated in such a dirty place so that men and women would know that it didn't matter their caliber. It didn't matter how they look or where they came from, but he had come for them, for their life. And I'm here to tell you that where your boating place, where God has destined for you to boat, your gifts and your calling in. It is necessary for the people in that place. Your boating is not about you. It's about the people that God has destined for you to nourish. My God, you might see St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a small dot on the map, but there are persons in this land that are waiting for you to push and continue to travel. Listen to me, if we give up, the youth of this land will have no remnant. There would be nobody that will be there to encourage them and push them. We have to continue to travel where we are bought in. Our baby will not only stay where we have bought it, but Jesus moved from province to province. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you start to boat, but God has an eternal plan and an eternal place 
in which he wants you to birth your child, your baby, your infant, the vision, the dream, the book. It doesn't matter when you birth it. It doesn't matter if persons were around you. It was only Joseph and Mary, and that was it until the men and the wise men and the shepherds came, but it doesn't matter. But God is saying that I am with you in that birthing room. I am with you in that birthing place. It might not look like much. You might just have a little bit. You might not have plenty, but God is saying, I have a birthing place for you and you will give birth. Continue to press, continue to travail. Find men and women of God God, that when you push and you give birth, that they will hold your hand, they will wipe your face. When you have given birth, that is not the end. Prophetess Amanda, when you have given birth, that's just the beginning because you have to nourish that child. The things that you were doing in your stretching season, the things that you were doing in your trimesters before, the fasting, the praying, you will have to intensify it because you have a life to sustain. You have a book to sustain. You have ministries to sustain. And God has a sense of humor because when you're done bought one, he has a sense of humor causing you to bought many more, many, 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 many more to the point that you become a midwife yourself to help others to bought what is in them. There is a bought in place for you as I close. There is a place of boating. Remember to prepare before you enter that place. Remember to be cleansed, consecrated. Remember to ask the Lord, who should go into the boating place with me? Remember that the boating room is not a quiet room. It gets loud. It gets hard. But your spiritual midwife and the help of the Holy Ghost, my God, is with you. And he will continue to help you to push and boat. And it doesn't matter where you boat. It might not be the ordinary place. It might be in your bedroom. It might be in your kitchen. It might be in the church. It doesn't matter. It might be on your workplace. It doesn't matter where you bought it. Once that's the place that God has destined for you to bought it in. You have to surrender your will to him. So let the end doors close. And you go and you find that table and give birth to that which God has called you to do. And remember, after the burden, there is still work to be done. There is nourishment. There are things that you still need to do. And another thing I want to say before I close is that if you are praying and you're continually fasting during your pushing season, that which you did to push is a thing that you have to do and continue to nourish and maintain that. We don't want our baby to die at one year old. We don't want our child to die before it's fully accomplished that which God has planned for it to do. We don't want the vision to die without coming to its full maturity because it doesn't make sense. So we need to continue to be in that place of prayer and fasting and learning and growing and sitting at the feet of men and women of God and learning of them because we cannot do it on our own. We need to learn and continually be in that place of burden. I give God praise. I give God thanks. I hope that you have been blessed. And I'm going to turn back over to prophetess Amanda this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a very critical season we are in. Hallelujah. And I want to, I want to really thank God for our minister Jetora this evening. And we are going to to do a few prayers. Anyone that is viewing need prayers, you pour the word and you need prayers. You need God to move in your life. You know that you are pregnant with something and you can't take the 
in, you know that God has a marked you, chosen, set you apart for a time like this. But for whatever reason, you you you, you know you, you you don't have help. You you, you don't have finding your divine helper. You are at a place where you need the help, but for some reason you don't even understand. There is no discernment. Whatever it might be the situation or the case, you are in a position and you need help. We are going to pray for you this evening. But I want to touch on uh, a few things that Minister Jethora would have um, said earlier when she spoke about it's a critical season. Hallelujah. We have to understand that what is the term critical? What is, what is, what is the understanding of critical? It means that you can't play around with the season. You can't be slack in the season. You can't be warm, lukewarm in the season. You gotta be hot for Jesus all the way because only when you are hot for him, then is when you will be able to give birth in the right timing, in the right season, in the right place and your baby will come forth. Your baby can be a natural baby. Your baby can be that book, that vision, that business, that whatever it is that is being planted inside of you, you are going to give birth to that in the right timing. Hallelujah. And you also, uh, Minister Jethro mentioned that you got to be prepared for your birthing season. It is important crucial that you prepare yourself for the boarding season. Hallelujah. And when you are in the valley, when you figure that nothing is happening for you, you're not, uh, people don't recognize you. Uh, they look down upon you. All sort of things are going on with you. Know that God is right there setting things up uh, behind the scenes for you. Hallelujah. And you know, Minister Jethro touched on, 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 on something that, that really touched my heart. And immediately the Holy Spirit started to speak to me. That Prophetic Wednesday platform was voted yes through uh, me and, and a few other colleagues, a few other persons working behind the scene. And the thing is, the Holy Spirit said it was not just only for me. Oh my God, that, that, that just touched every part of me. It was not only for Prophetess Amanda, but it was for the opening so that minister like Jetora could come on board, like Minister Diamond will come on board, uh, like Apostle Christine and Apostle Deborah will come on board, uh, and, 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 and Apostle Cleveland Davis will come on board, uh, and all the other persons, uh, Pastor Mattox, and all the other persons, Pastor Peters, that would have come, uh, Minister Brian. Ryan Bork and even to Minister Delano Bork would have come on and just share and release what God would have placed in their heart from time to time with different teams. So if this platform was not just bought it because uh, of, of, of just one person. And I understand the pain that I felt when I was in that labor room, the pain that I, I couldn't, I, did, I wanted to give up. I I wanted to just throw in the towel. I wanted to say no more. I can't do this. When I was chastised, when I was looked down upon, when they thought that I would have just do two or three months and that was it, I would not go anymore. I had to endure. And every time I wanted to just give up, God will send somebody to pray me to somebody to say, you know what? You got to give birth to this. What God is doing inside of you is more than you it's it's bigger than you it's not for you it's not for the time in which you are going through but it's for time to come and today i get a clear confirmation of of of, of what i was I was thinking what I was hearing, what I knew in my spirit and all of that. So I really, really, really deeply thank God for, for giving me this opportunity. And I really thank God, thank the Holy Spirit for keeping me in alignment so that all of these uh, uh, ministers could come on board and minister to the people that constantly come to feed one way or the other. Other Minister Jetora, God bless you tremendously. I'm excited uh, with what God is doing in your life as a young minister, and I know that you flow in the prophetic. 
I knew it since day one, since I met you, and I will have four different prophecies over your life, and I know that God is working that ministry out of you, and uh, I just want to encourage you to hold on, uh, hold on, travail. You have spiritual midwives that will pray you through. When the time is right, uh, it will come forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to go into some prayers. If you are blessed by the word of God, just type up, I am I am blessed and I will give birth. I am blessed and I will give birth. I will not have a miscarriage. I will not have a still birth. I will not give up until I am not only in the labor room, but I'm also out of the labor room. Hallelujah, somebody. I will not give in. I will not allow the enemy to take me off course. I will silence every other voice that wants to tell me I cannot do it. Uh, I will silence uh, any person that, that, that come to me and is speaking negative uh, into my spirit. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare uh, uh, that God is about to move in somebody's life tonight. Uh, that at the end of this month, uh, as we are on almost two days for the end of this month, uh, and we are stepping into a new month, uh, uh, that you will give forth because you have come Amen. into a different understanding of the yes. word of God and what is happening in your life. Uh, I declare and I declare uh, by the power of God that tonight uh, that will not be the same for somebody that is watching uh, that you will yeah. wake up in the morning uh, and you will feel a new strength uh, you God. will feel a new empowerment uh, yes. and understanding that will bring you to your place uh, of birthing uh, uh, in the midst of chaos you see we are heaven agents uh, in art chaos we are doing kingdom business uh, in art chaos and that alone is so difficult to give birth in the midst of chaos but god is saying in the midst of everything i have prepared a place for you uh, uh, that will shut out every distraction uh, and I will put the right people in your life uh, so that you will be able to give birth to that which I, the Lord, has placed inside of you. Uh, it's a spiritual thing. Uh, you're going to type, type it in the chat. It's a spiritual thing. Uh, many will not understand what you are going through. Uh, many will want to tell you stop praying and stop fasting uh, and, and, and give up on that and give up on the next thing. Uh, when they come to you tell them uh, it's a spiritual thing uh, so i don't expect you to understand what is happening with me uh, because what i'm going through uh, it's a spiritual thing hallelujah somebody it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing you will not understand my problems you will not understand my yes. issues, you will not understand my pain, you will not understand my weeping, you will not understand my mourning, you will not understand because it's a spiritual thing I have gotten a glimpse of my birth in place, I understand that I need to stretch some more because what God is bringing out of me, it is not small it is large, it is huge, what God is going to do in my life, it is not for me, so it's a small thing so I might look a little bit out of shape uh, I might put on a few weight. Uh, I might I might sound different from all the others. Uh, so it's a spiritual thing. Uh, and if you want to understand what is happening in my life, uh, come on board with this spiritual thing. Uh, get in alignment with this spiritual thing. Hallelujah. Uh, come on board and let God do something uh, in your life so you will understand uh, what is happening in our lives. Minister Jetora, I will ask you to Go right ahead. Some persons are asking for prayers that they are in a similar position. They need to understand the place of birth. They need to understand the stretching that they are going through. And I would like for you to pray that understanding and wisdom come to them in such a manner that they will know it is God that is speaking through the persons or through a message or through his word, that they will understand that this is the place that I am going to give birth in. So it's okay to push. 
and that God will send assigned divine helpers, midwives, because not everybody that that's pray oh, through the night and through the hours not every single midwives will be able to be in the room whether you are a man or a woman you need midwife so minister minister Jatora, go right ahead and pray so that they will be prepared and they will understand the place of birth in jesus mighty name hallelujah father we thank you we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise, knowing that you are the birther himself, my God. Yes. You are the one that has bought it, everything that we see, Lord God, everything that we don't see, Lord God, you are the author and the creator. Lord God, I lift your people in a special way tonight. I pray, oh God, my God, I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that right now your Holy Spirit will visit them in the name of Jesus, in their homes where they are frustrated, my God, where they are tired. Some of them, they are hanging on the last thread of strength that they think that they have. Oh God, even now, I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring insight, will bring yes. revelation, Shana yes. on the process of boating. My God, I pray for strength in the inner man to arise even now in the mm. name of Jesus. I pray yes, for the God. divine empowering of the Holy Ghost to touch them even now. My God, as they feel the stretching, there will Jesus. be a divine empowerment of the Spirit. Lord, we rely on the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that they will not give up that spirit of disappointment, that spirit oh, of the wicked one that will whisper in their ears that the decrees of evil and of darkness my god we silence every voice that is not your voice every voice that will speak my god in their ears we blind and we deafen them even now in the name of jesus every Thing that will come in that time when they are seeking your face, when Jesus. there is a breakthrough on the way that will come to intercept and to cause them to give up right now, Lord God, arise and let your enemies Jesus. be scattered tonight, yes, oh God, those evil midwives, those satanic midwives. Those Lord things Jesus. that will try to snatch the destinies of your people, my God, those spirits that will speak against that which is growing in them, my God, those spirits of Balak that will try to speak curses over them, my God, right now, by the authority in the name of Jesus and in the yes, blood God. of the Lamb, right now. We wage war against the powers of darkness, against the rulers and the principalities. My God, those that will try to visit them in their homes, we demarcate even now in the name of Jesus with the blood of the living Christ. Lord, that, that they will push in their season. That they will give, they will not give up. They will have the spirit of perseverance in the name name of Jesus. Uh, give them insight and understanding. Change their perspective. Oh God. God, we pray that you will assign divine midwives, divine helpers, uh, persons that will know the times and the stages of labor, yes, persons God. that will be trained in the spirit, persons that will be led by the spirit, persons that will know how to pray, that will teach them, they will teach them the ways of the spirit. Spirit, uh, even now in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Holy Ghost, uh, let your power touch your people even now. Uh, that woman that is in our home, uh, that is at our last, uh, oh Holy Ghost, uh, visit them even now. Uh, 
those that want to give up, so that, that, that having suicidal thoughts. Oh God, even now, arise in your power, visit your people in the name of Jesus. They will not abort that which should be aborted in this season. Oh God, there will be no miscarriage in the name of Jesus. Yes, that knowledge. they will not misinterpret their labor pains for other things, but they will know how to yes, be like God. a woman and position in the button position and push when they feel pressured they will continue to push when Mighty it feels God. like all is lost they will continue to push give them divine Jesus. strength give them divine wisdom give yes, them divine God. enablement oh god in the Jesus. mighty name of jesus Holy Ghost, that they will push in this season. Oh God, they will not be deterred by their boat in place or what Jesus. is happening around them. Mighty what it seems God. like everything is going upside down. My God, but they will look to the hills from whence cometh their help. Yes, they will Lord. know that their help cometh from the Lord. They will know that it's not about them but it's about those that you have assigned them to touch even now. Holy Ghost, do a reformation in our lives. Change our hearts. Change our minds, oh God. My God. We will know when to pray. We will know when to travail. We will know when to cry. We will know when to seek your face, oh God. We will know how to give birth, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give yes, you honor. Lord. My God. God, even know that something in them would leap, even as Jesus, John the Baptist leapt in Elizabeth, let something in their spirit, oh, my God, let there be a shift in their atmosphere, no, every no, atmosphere no, of depression and gloom and sadness and disappointment. I declare the word of God that they would give birth. They would give birth. I break every spirit of depression, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of giving up. And we declare the that they will continue. They will stay the course. They will press yes, the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. They will not be removed. The eyes will be as a flint. My God, the heart will be fixed on you, oh God. Father, we declare it is so. My God, yes. Thank so. you, Holy Spirit. Spirit, there's a shift in the atmosphere, my yes. God. There is a lifting yes. of burden, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We speak to the dry bones and we command the name them to of Jesus. Alive. We command them, we prophesy that they are coming alive. Those things that have been dead in you and dormant in you, that the Lord is burning oh, in this season. God. They will come alive in the Makakato Robo Sha. It doesn't matter how long it has been dead for. I hear the Lord saying that dry bones, my God, dry Jesus. situations, they are coming back alive even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your name, we have prayed tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we, 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 we lift the family of Jessame. Almighty God, before you this evening, God, Father and God, you know everything.
thing about this family, but we decree and we declare, mighty God, Lord God, that you, almighty Father, will comfort this family, Lord God. Father and God, that you, almighty God, will place the, the right people, almighty God, to help this family in every way possible. Lord God, the ones that are sick among them in this family, mighty God, we release your healing. We call upon Jehovah Rapha this evening, uh, almighty God, uh, to intervene. Uh, Lord God, uh, heal the sick among them, oh God, whether they're sick in mind, body, or soul. Uh, Father and God, we know that you can do it. Uh, and Father God, we pray and we decree and we declare, oh God, uh, that none of them, oh God, uh, will have miscarriage is almighty God, but they will come, Lord God, to full birth in season in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the enemy has snatched from them, mighty God, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord God, that you, almighty God, will give back to them, pressed down, shaken together and running over. In the name of Jesus, we silence the accuser of the brethren over this family, mighty God. Everyone that is out of alignment in this family, Lord God, we decree and we declare by your power that they will come in alignment, oh God, to your will and your purpose, God. Let your will be done. I come against the spirit of chaotic con and confusion in this family, chaotic activities. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus, even to the little one, oh God, the little smallest Jessamay family, God. Father God, I pray for unctionizing, almighty God, that order will come in the name of Jesus Christ. Father and God, you almighty God, you will do a new thing. Do a new thing in this family, almighty Father. I pray for more intercessors in this family. I pray that they will come together, almighty God, and seek your face as one almighty Father. I decree and I declare, oh God, that eyes have not heard, eyes have not seen, or ears have heard what you are about to do in this family. Family, Almighty Father, all those who have looked down upon them, I pray tonight and I decree that Lord God, they are coming out. Lord God, they are rising in their rightful position in you, Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Almighty God. Lord God, let this family, oh God, be a role model for other families in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father and God. Weeping may endure for a night the family of the jessamy i heard the lord saying weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning i declare whatever it is that is bringing your family to a place of limitation it is broken now by the spirit of god it is broken now by the fire of God it is broken now in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, remember the sick almighty God among us. Father God, all those who are sick, pain in their head, almighty God, body, different parts of their body, oh God, their lower back, uh, almighty Father, pain in their joints, Lord God pain, almighty oh Father, in the Lord, oh me, mighty God, I pray for your healing, oh God. I pray for your touch of healing upon their lives, almighty oh God, that they will get up and they will walk. Father and God, those that need insight, oh God, into uh, mighty God, things around them, oh God, I pray that you will open their eyes, Lord God, that they will see, almighty oh God, what you are doing in their lives in the name of jesus so father god we thank you tonight that you are going to do it oh god because we know that you are a faithful god we thank you almighty father for what you are about to do in the lives of your people in jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah come on somebody give god praise Amen. Hallelujah. If you are blessed. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you today, God, 
We thank you, almighty God. We thank you that you are doing a new thing in our lives. Hallelujah. Minister Jetsora, I want to thank you very much for taking the time out, for making yourself available for God to use you in such a tremendous way. I release the blessing of the Lord upon your life, favor in abundance, answers that is needed will come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray and I decree that the favor of the Lord will run you down and it will not only come upon you, but your entire household and all those that are connected to you in the name of Jesus. I thank God for what he is doing in your life and what he will continue to do and that you will give birth at the right time, at the right place, in the right season, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank everyone who have taken the time out to listen to the word of God from his servant this evening. And I know I was blessed. And I know that you were too. So continue to share the link so that somebody else will be blessed. Continue to share. Don't stop sharing because you're sharing the word of God that somebody, you've already been blessed, you've already received. Somebody else needs to hear this word. Somebody else needs to understand what God is doing. Somebody needs to know that when they're feeling the pain and all that they're going through, it's just stretching for what is about to come. And burden doesn't only happen with women. Burden also happens with men. Men, we need our men to give birth to the giftings that the Lord placed in them, to give birth to the fatherhood, to give birth to so many things that is needed in this now time, to give birth to that leadership role that you need to play, to give birth. We need our men and our women. We need watchmen. We need our men to give birth. Uh, to, to, to that gift of a watchman, hallelujah, uh, and our women to give birth to midwife, men could be midwives as well, hallelujah, so we need everybody to come on board to avail themselves so that God could use them, God is no respecter of person, he used you from any background, look at the women in Jesus' lineage, he used them, uh, some of them were in scandal of idolatry, some of them were, were uh, 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 prostitutes, some of them was, was, was um, worshiping idol. There's so many different uh, uh, women that was used just to give birth to the, the Messiah, the lineage of the, the, the coming to the Messiah. Hallelujah. So God could use you. Don't feel that God cannot use you. I want to encourage us tonight as we bring the curtain down on the last Wednesday of the month of September. Do not short sell yourself. Do not limit God. Do not put God on a limit. Allow God to do what he wants to do in your life because he who began a good work in you is able and just to complete it until the day of Christ. It means that as long as you come in alignment and as long as you make yourself available, he will do what he has to do in your life. And he also chastens who he loves. So if there's something inside of you, purpose, that have to give birth now and you're playing around, he will come after you. Your daddy will come after you, he will chase you. So sometimes when you're going through what you're going through and, you're, and things are falling apart and uh, friends are leaving and all these things are happening around you, know that uh, God is chastening you because he loves you and he wants you to come in alignment, to give birth, to purpose, uh, because there's somebody waiting upon your birthing. Hallelujah. So God bless you and he keep you. I pray and I ask God that he will favor you in abundance, uncommon favor. I prophesy uncommon favor favor over your life in the midst of chaos on common favor. Everybody will want to know what is happening around you. Why is that you alone getting to uncommon favor? Remember, let them know it's a spiritual thing. Uncommon 
favor over your life, uh, the life of your family, your ministry, whatever it is God is calling you to do. He is the source. He already supplied everything that you need. He already put things in place. He has the right helpers, right waiting uh, to help you on the way. Remember, your helpers would not look the way you want them to look. Uh, it might be a rowdy neighbor that the Lord will use uh, to help you uh, to push that baby through. Uh, it might be somebody that you don't like. Uh, so it means that if you have to start to uh, appreciate everyone that comes into your life, even though uh, they came in and you want to feel some sort of hurt or some sort of pain, or they might do did something to you uh, that, uh, that you feel is not right. Uh, forgive them, move on, learn from it. Uh, learn, understand what God has done, uh, bringing them into your life. Why did they cross your path? Why did it come into your life? So everything, uh, it's not for you to lose, but it's for you to learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to take the opportunity to thank all the ministers that would have ministered in the month of September. All the ministers. I pray that God will continue to bless them. I pray that God will continue to keep them. I also want to thank all and pray for all the persons that continue to view Prophetic Wednesday, continue to share Prophetic Wednesday, whatever you are doing uh, for Prophetic Wednesday. I pray that God will continue to bless you as we prepare ourselves ourselves for the next month to come as I prepare myself for the month of October and as all the other persons who are working behind the scenes prepare themselves for the month of October I pray that God will bless you even as you go forward into the new month as you go forward into the new month you will get receive the blessings of the Lord hallelujah so please stay tuned we will be back for the first Wednesday in the month of October and so that we'll be able to tell you what the Lord is doing in our lives for the month of October. So let me don't keep you any further. Hallelujah. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. I love you. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name.